Hey, hey, welcome to Roots, the podcast. I'm Jennifer. I'm Dwayne Roberts. Jennifer Roberts. <laughs> Are we related, bud? Uh, husband and wife. And Dynamic duo. One to twin powers activate. Come on, church. It's uh, lovely to be with you guys this day. Dwayne, it's lovely to be with you as well. We've, it's our friends and each other. We're touching 53, 5, 57 podcasts somewhere in there. Yeah. And so I I just want to say, Jennifer, I love doing this with you. Oh, bud. No, seriously. No, I love it too. It's fun. Yeah, you're just saying that because I did it. No, 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 no. You actually hate it. <laughs> okay. So for me, the podcasting world, uh, it's just... It's just a very vast world out there and lots of random things. But for us, I just love doing this because it's just this place where we just get to pontificate, yeah. share yeah. life, share right. a love. Yeah, and if if you like our podcast, then you like us. Because <laughs> I feel like this is truly who we are. This is the way we interact. Um, yeah, and, and so this feels to us like just an exp an outlet for our heart, just to be ourselves, and um, we hope you like it. We kind of are doing it for us. But. I mean, if you don't like it, um, that's fine as well. That's fine too. Jen, what do we want to talk about today? Well, Dwayne, funny you should ask. Um, I want to talk about forgiveness. Let's talk about something else. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's talk about money. There you go. <laughs> and getting lots of it. No, I want to talk about forgiveness because... Um, uh, here's what I found and I, I've, I've stated this for years and now I'm discovering it's true. The, the older you get, the more opportunity you have to be offended. And because the more life you have, the more interaction you have with human beings and difficult situations. And so forgiveness then becomes not just something that's appropriate to do as a believer, but it's kind of a life skill that it needs to be practiced your whole life long. And it's not easy. And I think, so today I wanna to talk about what forgiveness is not, because I have felt guilty if I have felt, if I have a moment where I forgive someone, but then I see them and I feel like, ah, you know, that, that, you know, you get frozen in your tracks again. And, oh no, I didn't do it. I didn't forgive and here I am again. And I, I think there are ways that forgiveness is a process. And it's, sometimes it's a one and done. And I'm all for that. I, I really believe in those moments. And I know that it's kind of like, oh no, it's not one and done. Sometimes it is. And it's been my experience that like you mean one and done is I just you know in my heart natural. I made the, I yeah. made the decision and it was done. It was yeah. and you're talking really hurtful things. Yeah, yeah. But one and done, you saw them, you and you go, you know what, I'm gonna forgive them. And and God gave you the grace beyond what you could ever do naturally, and you forgave them and never thought about it again. Right. I believe that happens. Yes. I don't believe it's every time that happens. I, I like I've had it with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I'm so grateful. Yeah. It's been beautiful how the Lord's done That's that with good. me. You got a journal filled of those stories. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Your one and done journal. Uh huh. That's so good, Dwayne. Um, well, I have a book, kind of Jennifer and her problems, and then it's I. It comes and how with, I forgave her. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, that's good. So you become the hero again. I get it. Mm. <laughs> so I want to talk about what it's not and. I mean, you know, it's it's an important topic. And Jesus talks about forgiveness, how important it is. He forgave us on the cross. When our sin was, you know, being poured out upon him, he forgave us when he's falsely accused, when he's mistreated. So we have an example that is, I mean, lays you bare, like, God, who created the universe, forgave me, a human being that he created, and took my place as the guilty one and made me the innocent one. So it's a high bar. It's a high bar. But but also I believe that we're called to walk at, out that high bar. Right. Because what we're walking out is not, it's not something I can do in and of myself. It's a, It's something that actually requires the work of the spirit of God within me. Yes. It's a fruit of the spirit. Yes. It's it's his activity in and through me that enables me to forgive. 
And so when I try to do it on my own, when I white knuckle it, I think, oh, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. It doesn't work. And you become fatigued in the process. Yet I also think that God is not impatient with the human process to wrestle through. And I think of even, you know, Romans 7, I'm not going to do this. The very things I say I'm not going to do, I do. It's, yes. The things I don't want to do, I do. Yes. So there is the war inside of us and the struggle. So that's, that's part of what I want to address a little bit. Just to validate, if the struggle is real for you, it is it is real. It's a real struggle. And so there's this article that I, I read from, where is it from? Uh, Don't quote them. Just say it's like some of your thoughts. Right? This is some, some of my original thoughts. Um, Focus on the Family wrote this article. Um, and it's, it, it, I just thought they, they, you know, capitalize it well. And they just give five points. And I'm just going to read them. We can talk about it. So forgiveness is not a feeling. And I, I think that's good to know that I can put a stake in the ground and say with my words, my confession, I forgive Dwayne. Well, that'd be easy. Right. Like pick somebody hard. Right. <laughs> like, like pick something hard. Like that's super easy. I know you're the best. So I forgive someone. There is it, there's something about it being an act of your will. And maybe I wow, still really feel good, negative emotions, but I'm saying, no, this is what I believe. This is, I am, I am bringing myself under the subjection of Christ and I forgive. So it's a decision. It's a decision. It's not, I, and, and you, and you don't make that out of feeling. No. It's actually a biblical truth. Yes. And so I'm going to make that. That's really yes. good. And so, Often feelings follow, but it doesn't have to follow. You don't have to feel a gush of love for someone to know that you've forgiven them because you forgave them. Out Will loud. you ever have love for them? I think sometimes. How about all the time? Nope. Why? Because I think it's still a process. Well, I'm talking, I'm, I'm saying, it, you know, like the, the one and done. But then there's sometimes it's a five year process. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. do you think after five years you can have love for them? I think you could have love for them. You may not have affection for them. You may not even want to go into business with them. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? But but yeah, and I think there are yeah. that's it's important, but I can actually get to the place where I mean, I truly hated that person. Sure. But I can get to the place where I, I see God's heart and I Absolutely. agree with God's heart. Absolutely. But it doesn't mean I'm in relationship or have right. to be. Right. It doesn't mean I need to be their friend. Absolutely. Because they're goofy. Right. And so, <laughs> no, but healthy boundaries yeah. with broken people who have hurt me, you yeah. need that. But to have that heart of God, that's what I'm yes. talking about. And, okay, so. And, and, and it can lead, the, it, you can have compassion for someone. So in the process of forgiveness, I think you say, God, help me see them the way you see them. Yeah, and it's a huge prayer. A huge prayer. And often, uh, for me, just the way the Lord speaks with me, not because I'm special, but I get well, mind... You're kind of special. Right? You're special. I get special. mind's eye visions, typically. Jen, you're, pe you're special. <laughs> don't, 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 don't do that to yourself. You're, you're right. special. I'm the best. I'm the best. No. <laughs> <laughs> just special. And so sometimes I'll get just a mind's eye vision of someone and I'll see an injustice they endured as a child. Mm -hmm. And I go, oh, well, then that makes sense. Yeah. And so I can relate to them based on, you know, they, they experience pain. They experience difficulty. And you just kind of, you form sometimes around brokenness. And so that helps me. Um, anyway. So number two, Jen. Okay, so forgiveness is not a feeling. Number two, forgiveness is not pretending you weren't hurt. That's that's a pause moment. Like I don't like to admit that someone hurt my feelings because one, that means they they had power over me. <laughs> two, that means that I have the ability to be hurt. You know so what I mean? It, it, I'm vulnerable. Yeah, and and then the if i were super godly and perfect 
it wouldn't hurt me if my identity were so in Christ, yeah. then their words wouldn't even penetrate me. Well, that's just not true. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. That's stinking thinking, Dwayne. <laughs> and so I think part of the battle is admitting that hurt me. Because if you don't acknowledge it, it just hides in the dark and grows. So, and then you're not acknowledging the wound. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, as a kid, um, I pretty much every day had s- some type of bodily bruise or, <laughs> or I had it all the time. I, I mean, I was either cut or bruised pretty significantly sometimes. Just I, I was a just, just playing. A, I was a hard play kid, like took it seriously. Yeah, I appreciate but that. But there was a couple of times where I didn't pay attention. Yeah. And, and it, it's kind of sick, but I actually, I like some of my wounds ish would get infected. Right. And, and so, because I didn't clean them. Right. I didn't pay attention to right. them. I think that's an excellent um, illustration. But, Dwayne. but on a sick side, I actually liked it because then I could put <laughs> peroxide on it and see a bubble and then it stings a little bit because it's killing it. I actually. You, did you enjoy so that, bud? That's just, let's keep that part out. Okay. But, but if you don't, if you don't, this is really helpful. If you don't validate yeah. that there's been a wound. A wound will turn to a problem. Yeah. That's really good. I think it's really important. And like I said, I don't like to acknowledge when someone hurt me. No. I'm embarrassed even. I'm ashamed sometimes. Now, that's my own frame and my own jacked upness. So maybe not everyone is like that. But I need to acknowledge when someone hurts my feelings. That's good. Number three. That hurt. Okay. Um, Number three, forgiveness is not condoning what the person did to you. And so, oh yeah, no big deal. That's no big deal. It, they didn't mean it. It's fine. Those aren't words of freedom. Those are words of glossing over an issue. And so we don't condone it. We don't say it wasn't a big deal. It was a big deal. That's not okay to treat someone like that. And so I tend to do this more than you do. Yeah. Um, we had an instance recently where Jennifer, you went, um, that's not okay. Uh huh. And you went and corrected it. Uh huh. And I'm like, ah, who cares? Mm-hmm. And um, part of it is my avoidance of confrontation. Mm-hmm. It's not my favorite topic, but um, I think that this is this is actually um, super important. Mm-hmm. You and I have a a a a situation where we have been really some 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 people caused us a lot of problems yeah and this is several several years ago but you and your no we're going to confront this it has really helped our marriage and our family you as a couple you and i to navigate these people Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it was because of you we've actually confronted this situation four times Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where i was just more no i'm just gonna let it go i'm just gonna ignore these people right and I, I so value that in you that you've been tenacious and going, no, we're going to, we're going to make a deal out of this. Mm-hmm. And w- it's not make a big deal, make right. a big deal, but what you're doing is wrong to us. Yes. And, and I think that do it with wisdom, do it with mm-hmm. humility, mm-hmm. own your stuff in the conversation, Absolutely. all of those good communication skills, but no, let's talk about this. Right. It actually shows that you value relationships. Yeah. If not, pick and roll and move on like yeah. who cares and so if you if you condone someone's action like yeah no big deal what happens in your heart i mean it grows cold not you, for me but go okay on. good yeah. yeah no it, it absolutely and does you, you slowly just cut them off yeah that's not a, that's then now you're the problem yes Yes. And Jesus isn't cool with that either. Yes. And that's been where I camped for a season uh-huh. with, in this situation. Uh-huh. And I, I don't think it was right. Right. And then that grows into bitterness. Yes. Which is the entry so, point for the devil. So we thank you, Johnny, for giving us these five points. So forgiveness is not a feeling. Uh-huh. You validate actually, no, that hurt. Right. So I'm open. Yep. Um, and, and then to... What was the point? I wrote uh, down. Forgiveness is not condoning what the person did to you. It's not just glossing over, right? condoning, say, hey, it, it wasn't a big no deal. No big deal. No big yeah. deal. Okay. Yeah. Point and number four. Forgiveness is not trusting the offender. What does that mean, Jim? Oh, Dwayne. 
Now, this is a big deal because we think it's almost like, okay, I've forgiven them. I close my eyes. My arms are open wide. This is so beautiful. You know, probably not. And, you know, particularly. I still don't understand the point. The, you mean this point or yeah. my point? Well, I love the arms open. It was beautiful. It was glory on you. Uh huh. But I still, it's not trusting the person. Yeah, I don't think it means that you have to fully trust them. It's oh, I see. Like I don't have to be in a relationship with them, right? Or I don't have to go back to where we were, right? Okay, gotcha. Right. It's it's it, validating. It, we got a problem here, right? So I'm going to adjust how I relate to you, right? Okay. And it, it may it may get 100 percent resolved. Like for example, if someone were uh, sexually abused by someone, mm -hmm. guess what? I'm not going to do. Let my kids spend the night at their house. Uh, I may have right. moved on in my heart and right. forgiven them, yeah, but I'm watchful. And I'm not letting my children go there. Right, right. And and if they are there, I'm watching the whole yeah. time, especially relative. Yeah. Oh, no sleepovers at their house. 100% no. Right. And I'm saying 100%, 100%. You right, know what right, I mean? right, 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 right. That is not, that doesn't mean you haven't forgiven them. That means you're aware and you're watchful. And especially as a parent, yeah. be protective. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Yep. So, yeah and but it's but it's in all areas all areas and so um so uh trust has to be restored it takes time to restore trust yeah and you know we had a situation where we were in a mediation and i i said the person was repenting and i said okay it's gonna it's gonna take him a minute for me to trust you mm -hmm. and the mediator said no trust is given distrust is earned and I wouldn't, I don't agree with that statement at yeah, all. I actually, um, I agree with your agreement. It, it's no distrust was shown. Distrust happened. It happened. It was habitual. Uh huh. And now it's going to take time to trust that it would, it, it would be unwise for me to, that's what I mean. My eyes closed, arms up gotcha. wide. Oh, I'm yeah. all in. Everything's okay. We're forgiven. No, yeah. no. Yeah. you, you walk out a process and, and that's okay. Yeah. And to give yourself permission to even go slowly when trust is being restored. Yes. And build proper boundaries and yeah. just don't invite somebody. If somebody, you know, somebody takes a swipe at you and stabs you, um, you're not going to go, hey, come back tomorrow. Let's do this again. <laughs> so, and that doesn't Can I mean, sharpen the knife for and you. And that doesn't mean that you're not forgiving. No. So there's healthy boundaries. Right. All right, John, we got... Because um, we, we have a romantic notion of what forgiveness is. And this is, when you're in the nitty gritty of it, it's yeah. ugly and messy. And yes. you don't know if you're doing a good job. And you think, I got to forgive, I got to forgive. And, and so sometimes we don't act in wisdom in walking out forgiveness. And we become um, a habitual uh, person who gets hurt and mistreated. Because yeah, we didn't know. Because you keep yourself in those yes, situations. Yes. Yeah. So number five. Again, for John Dobson, thank you so much. Thank for you, John. This help. Forgiveness is not relieving the person of responsibility. So w what I mean by that. What's the difference? Uh, the difference is, for example, a husband has an affair, and his marriage is broken, and they have children. It doesn't mean he doesn't pay child support. No, he does. Oh, I see. Okay. You know, some, yeah. there's consequences to some of this. Yeah. And, you know, the wife, she's forgiven him. She's moved on. Her heart is clean. It doesn't mean, no, don't worry. You don't have to pay child support. Uh -huh. I've forgiven you. Yes. Now, she may. That may be a supernatural thing that the Lord asked her to do. I doubt it. Probably be because you. God cares about that. No, the father I, I think the, I think if that was done, um, you should actually continue to to actually support your family, right? In that way, that's a godly thing. Yeah. and so that's what I mean. Just yes. practically in, in a situation like that. Um, but again, I also I just want to back out because I said that hard. And I was I'm sitting there thinking, I it it situationally. It, it really does matter. So yeah. I, I want to be careful with that. Right. But right. please continue, Jen. Yeah. Your words so, are pearls. Aren't they? Oh my gosh. So I, I mean, I basically just want to say forgiveness isn't easy. It doesn't come naturally to us. Yeah. 
we want to hide and say something didn't hurt. Yeah. We don't want to acknowledge a wound. We we just want to pretend it's all fine and and make our language sound godly instead of being godly. Yeah. And it just takes effort. Yes. And so um I just want to read this verse. Yeah. And I I actually kind of wish it didn't exist. Okay. Um so this is um if you want to turn with me to the book of Matthew. If you will. I'm just kidding. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. So this is kind of the Sermon on the Mount. Not kind of. This is the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> it's at the heart of the Sermon on the Mount. Verse 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Hmm. But if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's weighty. Yeah. Um, and so Jesus said this, knowing the traumatic, the trauma, knowing the mm -hmm. offenses that the, the evil done towards people was mm -hmm. going to fill the earth. Yeah. And so he, I believe he said this with great kindness, yeah. not, hey, he goes, no, you're going to be hurt. Mm -hmm. You're going to be mistreated mm -hmm. again and again. You're going to be mistreated because we are a, we're living in a sinful, broken world. Mm -hmm. And so I think that Jesus, knowing that, he said, listen, you, I need you. You're going to need to forgive. Yeah. And then there's this place where if you walk in unforgiveness, mm -hmm unforgiveness will be shown to you yes so this is not to me a salvation issue right but you know peter he says if you don't have a right relationship with your wife if you're not in a healthy relationship mm -hmm. with your wife your prayers will be hindered mm -hmm. so there is this place mm -hmm. where if you don't have resolution in your relationships mm -hmm. it impacts your interaction with the father mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i and i want to this is a heavy yeah this is this is not a light verse. Right. This is actually a heavy concept. Yeah. yeah. And so I want us to make sure that as we're talking here, this is, and just prioritize mm -hmm. forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not a feeling. Right. And it's not a, it's not a washing things under the carpet. Right. It's not saying it's just, you know, let's just forget about it. Yeah. So it, you do need to walk through the process. You need to identify that yeah. hurt me. Mm -hmm. You need to identify mm -hmm. that was painful, mm -hmm. but between me and God, I forgive you. Yeah. And so I, uh, uh, there's actually so much more we could talk about on this, but I know we're kind of running mm -hmm. out of time. Mm -hmm. But um, any other thoughts? Or? Yeah, I, I think w the, the most difficult kind of forgiveness is the forgiveness you have to give when the person doesn't even acknowledge they did anything. So what do you do there? Because it's a huge point. It's a huge point. You know, you and we can all give a million examples. I just think it takes time. And so you have to sit before the Lord and, and make those statements. I forgive them. Make that confession with your mouth and go through these these same steps. And, and sometimes it's helpful. I don't love this, but sometimes it's helpful for someone to sit in the chair it, you know, especially like if your father did something to you and he's dead now, and then you're going to act like the father. And I'm going to say, I forgive you, father. Like sometimes it's helpful for the person to have a person stand in. They didn't do it. They're not really that person, but for the, the victim or whatever, the right term, yeah. their own soul. Yeah, totally. And that's okay. Absolutely. I, I don't like the goofy, you know, I've been in counseling sessions like, okay, pretend like your relative is there in the chair. What would you say to them? I'm like, I know what I would say to them. I'm not playing. I don't want to pretend I'm not playing dress up right now. So, that, but that's just more my way. I don't enjoy that kind of thing. But for others, I've heard powerful testimonies of that releasing them and them being able to have breakthrough in a way they couldn't until a physical person was there that they could say it to. Totally. Does that make sense? Yep. Well, it's like, I'm just, Jennifer, you just dropped some nuggets here <laughs> because there's one relationship in my mind right now that I didn't do number two for a really long time. Yeah. I didn't validate that it actually hurt me. Yeah. And I didn't, conf so I didn't do, I didn't do any two, three, I mean, three, four, five because yeah. I didn't do number two. Right. But it was a 
a, a relationship that for years mm -hmm. was damaging to me. Yeah. And I think if I would have early on mm -hmm. said, this relationship is actually hurting me, not yeah. blessing me, yeah. I would have actually probably saved myself a ton of emotional wrestle. Right. right. So this is, this is really, um, really, really, really a big deal. Yeah. Is just to validate or, or to, uh, that hurt. And that hurt me. Yeah. That offended me. Yeah. That, and, and so, um, when I think of, um, there's one thing I would just want to throw out here and then have you talk into it. So let's use the, the church at large. Yeah. So many have been hurt by the church. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So the the you know the the organization mm -hmm. or this the mm -hmm. church at large has yeah. has been you know different experiences. I've walked away offended and hurt. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to somebody in that situation? Yeah, to walking out what you just laid yeah. Out? Well, the first thing I would say is is Jesus and the church often are very different, and so don't project onto God what people did to you. Yeah, to separate that and say. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Because so the church is, yeah. You need God as your ally. But if you think he's the one that did that because that was the church, yeah. he, you're not going to make him your ally. Well, it's not even your ally. To me, it, I mean, it, speaking of this point, it's just like they're entirely different. The church is right. led by broken people. Yes. God's not broken. Right, right. And so your conclusions about the church, make sure they're not your conclusions about God. Exactly. Okay. And, um, and then, you know, the next thing I say is, is Jesus experienced mistreatment and he knows what it is to be sinned against. Yeah. He really does. Yeah. And so by his own people, everything I, I, uh, so many times I wanted to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like, Get the church, ooh, Christians, ooh. You know what yep, I mean? Yep. They bite. You know, if, if you're a shepherd, you get bitten. Yep. So there's a whole other topic about how leaders in the body of Christ deal with being bitten by their sheep. You know, that's, that's a whole other topic. But the body of Christ, it's a painful wound because you didn't expect it. Yeah. You 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 had an expectation that people were going to do godly things and be, you know, an example and da 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 da. So there's there's layers to the pain. There's yeah. disappointment, there's disillusionment, yeah. there's shock because your guard wasn't up. You know, all of that. And and so you have to deconstruct all of that in your mind going, okay, they didn't da, da, da. and and just take time to sit through the offense and deconstruct it and go, okay, Jesus still loves the church. Therefore, my commitment is I'm going to still love the church. Yes. And Jesus, help me because yes. you know what this feels like. Yes. Help me. Amen. And it's good. Jesus was betrayed by a kiss. Like Judas stepped into his personal space gave him the greeting that was kind and warm and friendly right here. I mean, right there on yeah. his cheek. That was the indication. Hey, this one, this is the one you need to grab because I'm going to kiss him and that's how you'll know. Yep. He was in the inner circle. Jesus knew betrayal. Yes, he did. He knew it he for knew, real. He knew it really well. And, and it, it, it was, it was personal. It, of course it was. And so for me, that helps me when I think, okay, I'm not alone in this. Yeah. And so, so Lord, help me forgive. Give me your heart. I want the same heart you had. Please put that in me. And, it's good. but it, it's, it is challenging because it's vague when you have this vague sense, the church hurt me. Right. But I think it still needs to be recognized yes. and and but i think in this um to understand we are truly broken people mm -hmm. and we the body of christ we the church yep and if you can have that lens yeah and then really god and the church are not the same not the same and so the vehicle that god is uses uses to bring forth his purpose his kingdom the great commission it's is imperfect. the church but it's it's a progress yes. it's a work in progress yes. so awesome and, you know, one last thing as we wrap up, but even if you're like, 
okay, that's it. I don't go to church anymore because they hurt me. You don't get that option. Now, I think maybe find a church that you can, you know, feel maybe a bit safer in. Yeah. But you got to keep your toe in the water. And maybe you're not like all in swimming deep. Maybe it's just your toe in the water. But have someone that you're saying, hey, I'm trying. I'm I'm not checking out of the body of Christ. Yes. I'm I'm still going to connect. I just have to go slow right now. And that's okay. It's okay. A wounded but, person but don't doesn't stay run. there, though. Don't, don't stay, stay there. there. It, it'll get messy for you. It, it will because the enemy picks off those that are isolated and outside. Yes. You need to stay in in the in the fellowship of other believers, even in a smaller context. But you can't eject fully. Amen. All right. God bless you guys. Yeah. God bless <clears throat> you guys. Um, Jennifer and I need to jump off because. Um, I have to confront her. <laughs> and you want to do it publicly, just to model how no, we do it? No, you do not want me to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, big boy. I'm kidding. Hey, man, God bless you guys, and we'll see you uh, next week. Ate mais.